Plus. Store mode in the Home Depot app gives you in-store tools made to help you get more done. To guide you every step of the way and explore products quickly with the scan. That way you get the top brands at the best prices without missing a beat. It's made for doing. Download the Home Depot app and see how doers get more done. From Johnson Haygood Stadium in Charleston, South Carolina, it's Southern Conference football on ESPN3. And today, the Citadel Bulldogs play host to their longtime rivals, the Furman Paladins. I'm Dave Weinstein alongside Jack DeLongshaw. Both of these, these teams are coming off losses last weekend. The Citadel up at App State. Furman at home against Samford, looking to get back to winning today. Of course, Jack, doesn't take much to get up for a team you don't like, and these two teams have been doing battle for over 100 years. Dave, you had mentioned it. In these long-time rivalry games, throw the records to the wayside. These two teams do not like each other. Two schools that are c completely different backgrounds and cultures. It really does not matter the records. These guys are going to be ready to play on this beautiful Saturday in Charleston. Well, Furman runs a balanced offense, but they have one of the best players in the country in tight end Ryan Miller. Listed as a tight end, but he's more of a Swiss Army knife. Jack does a little bit of everything. We're gonna, we don't want to beat a dead horse today, ladies and gentlemen, but Miller entering this ball game with eight touchdowns in his last eight games. He's an absolute lethal weapon for that pallet and offense. It's a speed at the tight, bit, tight end position that is absolutely uncharacteristic around the country. The Citadel prefers to punish you on the ground in their triple option attack. They have a stable of backs, but the leading rusher this season is the B-back, Logan Billings. Billings averaging about 5.3 yards a carry. This is a Citadel offense that's lacking the big play. They've played four games so far this year and have only had five plays go over 20 yards at line of scrimmage. Billings is that guy to break a big play. He could be the difference maker in that Citadel offense today, Dave. Well, it's the 102nd meeting between the Citadel and Furman, Citadel checks in at one and three overall, one and one in the Southern Conference. Furman three and two, one and one in the Southern Conference as well. Let's talk about some keys to this one, Jack. Let's start with the Bulldogs. Absolutely, and for Citadel, it's gonna be all about controlling the line of scrimmage. Obviously, that flex bone triple option for the Citadel, it's gonna be key for them today to break a couple big plays through that line of scrimmage, running behind your guards, hitting that A-gap hard for the Citadel. Again, as cliche as it sounds, it's gonna be the battle in the trenches going against a Furman defensive line. That's very veteran. Also, they've gotta create the big play we talked about it earlier five plays from line of scrimmage that have only gone over 20 yards for Citadel they have to find a way to bust one loose today to kind of jump start a slow starting Citadel offense you're taking a look at Brent Thompson in his seventh season at the helm here at the Citadel SoCon coach of the year in his first season back in 2016 that was a 10 win season 8-0 in the SoCon that season just a seventh undefeated season in the history of the conference and it was the most wins for a first year coach here at the Citadel, and that's their last playoff appearance, looking to get back this season in 2022. Absolutely, and for Coach Thompson, I think for this Citadel team, because of the recent struggles offensively, it's all going to be about an early start. They haven't played at home in close to a month, and Coach Thompson got to love the fact that his team's back here at Johnson Haygood. We mentioned the 102nd meeting between these two teams. It's a rivalry that started back in 1913. Paladins won last year's clash in Greenville 24 to 14, and they were avenging a 27 to 6 loss to the Bulldogs in Charleston back in the spring of 2021. Bulldogs have actually won three of the last four in this series, but they did lose last year up in Greenville. Absolutely, and, and going into today's matchup, where there's a lot of injury questions at that Furman quarterback position. Jace Wilson actually making his second career start in that matchup last year, something that I'm sure we'll talk about today, but it does seem like, uh, Dave, that we are going to see Tyler Huff, the grad transfer from Presbyterian College today for the Paladins, but Jace Wilson, a guy who's got a lot of history already in this early career against the Bulldogs. Yeah, Tyler Huff. The grad transfer from Presbyterian out of Orange Park, Florida. He should be getting the start today back under center for the Paladins. Both teams now taking the field here 
at Johnson Haygood Stadium. Expecting a crowd of over 12,000 today for this rivalry matchup. It's parents weekend here at the Citadel. They had ring ceremony last weekend, so a lot going on here in Charleston. And we expect a great day here at Johnson Haygood Stadium. Colby Kintner getting ready to kick it off for the Bulldogs. Just about ready for kickoff here in Charleston. Kintner, the sophomore from Windermere, Florida. Special teams player of the week in the SOCON after the ETSU performance. And we are underway from Johnson Haygood Stadium. Kendall Thomas on the return up the middle. And he's taken down at about the 29 yard line. So that's where Furman's offense will begin. We mentioned Tyler Huff, the starting quarterback for the Paladins, grad student from Orange Park, Florida, 719 yards passing this season. Five touchdowns, a couple of picks. He has rushed for 232 yards and one touchdown. Exited with an injury at Charleston Southern, completing 68% of his passes this season. And Wayne Anderson Jr. will get the first touch. Picks up about two. Absolutely. And Dave, you know, we talked about those Citadel keys for the game. As Furman, you see their first action so far in this game. It leads me right into what I kind of want to talk to him about. We're going to talk about the two-time All-American Ryan Miller all afternoon. But for Tyler, Tyler Huff and his Paladin offense, it's going to be key for them to facilitate to all weapons. You see Wayne Anderson there, a former running back. There's a lot of skill on this Furman team. Quick pass and the completion to Harris. That'll be enough for a first down for the Paladins. We talked about Miller, but there's a plethora of weapons on the outside for Furman this season. Harris, Anderson, Dean, all have similar number, numbers at the wide receiver position. Absolutely. They love to distribute the football. It's a you know, can really contributes to what Coach Hendricks and this offense like to do. They want to distribute the wealth. And you even saw Kendall Thomas on the kick return. That's a young guy in a really deep running back room. And Roberto gets the carry, picks up about four. Redshirt Jr. from Fayetteville, North Carolina. 300 yards rushing and three touchdowns coming in, averaging four and a half yards per carry. He is a load at 5'11", 231, Jack. Doesn't he look like a middle linebacker back there in the backfield? And we talk about all the weapons on the outside. Tyler Huff, an experienced grad transfer. Talk about a gritty young man really wanting to get his first taste of this rival reaction. But Roberto might be the guy that's the difference maker for the Paladins today. Play action. Huff going deep. He's got Miller had a step. Overthrew him. Whew. I mean, let me tell you, it's been about two weeks since Huff had his last action, but Miller right up the seams. You see the speed from the two-time All-American tight end. Huff, that's going to be a throw that he wishes he had back. But like we mentioned, it was just two weeks ago that the young man dislocated his elbow. He's a guy that was coming off a torn ACL in his final year at Presbyterian College. This is a grad transfer, a really mature young man that just wanted to play in this ball game, and you just love seeing him out there today, Dave. Well, it sets up a third and six for the pass. Paladins, Huff, plenty of time. Still looking, fires down the middle and completes to Anderson. That's a first down at the Citadel 42 yard line. Wayne Anderson Jr., the redshirt junior from Prosper, Texas. 21 receptions on the season coming in. A couple of touchdowns, 64 yards last week against Samford. There's going to be something to keep an eye out for. Heading into that last matchup against Charleston Southern, Tyler Huff, as dominant as Dominic Roberto has been, Tyler Huff was leading this Paladin offense in rushing as well. Citadel clearly respecting his rushing, but boy, did he have all time back there on that last play to throw. A quick pass by Ben Ferguson. <laughs> Name we don't hear often for. I was going to say, Dave, I mean, I, not tooting our own horn up here, but talk about distributing the wealth. Ben Ferguson, a freshman that's not even on our two deeps out here, but a credit to what the Paladins are trying to do. They've brought a plethora of different weapons out here. You see Luke Shiflett, the wide receiver, the red shirt senior at the bottom of your screen. They've almost wide receiver by committee here on this first possession. And the give to Roberto dances his way up for a first down and more. 
up to the Bulldog 29-yard line. Dominic Roberto had a big game against the Citadel last season. 12 carries, 132 yards, and a touchdown. Broke a 90-yard touchdown run. It was the second longest run in program history. And that's something that the Bulldogs are going to be wary of today. Those big plays really controlled the game against Furman last season. Gave up two big plays, and it cost them the big play to Miller and the big play to Roberto. And the handoff once again to Roberto. And he gets a big chunk. You know, Dave, you talked about the size of Roberto. 5'11", 231. I mean, seriously, it's a linebacker playing back there. But don't mistake it. You talk about the 90-yard run. He has got elite explosive burst in that backfield. He finds a hole. He hits it. There's not a lot of dancing around for Dominic Roberto, but... Expect to see a lot of names in that backfield as well. Coach Hendricks had a couple guys. Devin Abrams is a guy, a redshirt senior they love to talk about. But Kendall Thomas, working back from an injury, expect to see him in the backfield. He's the quickest of all three backs. Again, Roberto, the workhorse, has enough for the first. And Furman having success running up the middle right now against the Citadel. Absolutely, in the Citadel, they really pride themselves up front with some big bodies. You talk about their defensive end, Carson Hatchett, who's the second team all so con, and K.J. Pierce, the nose tackle. But right now, Furman really getting kind of whatever they want on this early drive. First down once again for the Paladins. Abrams next to Huff. Play action. There's Miller. Is he in? No, he's down at the one. Well, Ryan Miller was checked by Chris Beverly, the free safety for the Bulldogs. He'll get credit for the tackle. Really, it's about the two. So it'll be first and goal from the two. You know, Dave, we talked about all week long. What was the Citadel going to try to do defensively to slow down Miller? Were they going to maybe play a nickel defense and have that safety hybrid kind of chase him around all field? Well, for those first two plays going at Miller, Miller, he's been pretty wide open. Well, there's Abrams, plunges in. He's got it. Touchdown, Furman. I mean, talk about getting whatever you wanted. They go to the Wildcat. They go to the red shirt senior, Devin Abrams, and they plow right in. You see number 81, Parks Gissinger right there, serving as that lead blocker on the tight end sweep there. An unbelievable drive. We talk about time of possession, and Furman really taking advantage early on in a dominant drive for the Paladins. The extra point from LaPro is up and good. So Furman leads the Citadel 7 0. Tremendous first drive from the Paladins. We're going to take a break and we'll be back from Charleston right after this. Well, it was a 70-yard drive that took under five minutes, Jack, for the Paladins. We, I mean, Dave, we talked about it. Maybe time of possession. Furman coming in, sixth in the country in time of possession. Even that matchup against Clemson, they controlled the football the entire game. Obviously, going up against a triple option team, the Citadel absolutely has to control the football in order for them to win. But Furman went and got points really quick there in just a two-minute drive, really setting the tone here early at Johnson Haygood. Off the big leg of Ian Williams. Furman uses two kickers. LaPro will handle the short field goals, the extra points. Williams, the long field goals and kickoffs. So it's a touchback. And here comes the Bulldog offense. And the first start, first career start for Ahmad Green, redshirt freshman from Baltimore, Maryland, listed at 5'10, 175. Last week made his first appearance at App State under center. Saw action in the fourth quarter. And it's a toss to Cooper Wallace. 
And a nice gain on first down for the Bulldogs. Getting back to Green, completed his only passing attempt for six yards, carried three times for two yards. Starting quarterback Peyton Derrick out with an undisclosed injury. I shouldn't say out. We could possibly see him today, but he's not getting the start. Absolutely. And for Ahmad Green, what a better guy to learn from than from the grad transfer, Pey Peyton Derrick. A lot of experience in this conference from Derrick, from Wofford College. For Ahmad Green, it's going to be really important for him to kind of live in the moment, embrace this rivalry. He's getting his ex first experience in a much so hated rivalry. Lean on those A and B backs for those guys. Lean on the experience of a Logan Billings at first play. Staying on time is huge for him today. Green back to pass. Fires deep downfield. He's got a man. It's Christian Hilton, the freshman from Granville, Ohio. Well, how about that? We thought that they would kind of let the redshirt freshman slowly acclimate himself into the game. And they go to another freshman, Christian Hilton. He goes up, he slips through, runs straight down the seam, completely unwarranted. Furman's defense ready to guard the triple option, but boy, Citadel catches him sleeping there. Well, Tyler Cherry is the main weapon at wide receiver for the Citadel Bulldog squad. He's out with injury, so who will step up in his place? Right now, it's Christian Hilton. Had one reception for 15 yards at Mercer, one for nine at App State, but the big one here. And the Bulldogs are in business as we take another look. Perfect throw from Ahmad Green. How about, what about the confidence from the redshirt freshman? We talk, he's a four-sport athlete out of high school. Not scared to let it rip there on the first play of the ball game. We mention it in the keys of the game. Citadel coming in with only five plays over 20 yards. Well, they must have heard us talking some trash up here because they went and got it on the second play of the game. Llewellyn and Conway. Wallace in motion. And the give is to Conway. Good pickup on first down. Ooh. Conway still fighting down to the 26-yard line. The grad transfer from Lindenhurst, New York. Coming over from LIU, played three seasons for the Sharks. Versatile player, return kicks at LIU as well. He can play some A-back, he can play some receiver. And you know, you just see a level of passion and emotion out of this Citadel offense. It's a team that's taken a lot of criticism. They haven't scored a touchdown in close to two games, eight quarters. They haven't scored since that big time win against Eastern Tennessee. You love to see the misdirection early. Not so much love to see this as they're gonna back it up here on second down. And they're gonna back up five yards here. Our referee today is Jeff Page. So instead of a second and short, Jack, it's a second and long, not a situation that the Citadel likes to be in. You know, we talked about it with Coach Thompson earlier in the week, but the importance of not committing those penalties and staying on time with the chains, right? When you run this triple option offense, you're going to utilize all four downs. So in order for them to pick up three to four pop, which they haven't done on this drive, they picked up close to five to six almost time, it's important for them to stay disciplined today. And a fumble here. The connection not there on the exchange between Green and Llewellyn, but Green able to recover. You're going to see maybe a little bit of hesitancy there. Llewellyn looking like he wanted to go ahead and try to pick up the two to three. Green had other mind, uh, something else in mind, but a really big bummer for the Citadel offense to kind of stall out a drive. You have a couple big plays. You're feeling really good. No better way to stall out an offense than with a penalty, and then you know obviously the the fumble there, unforced fumble there. So it'll be third and eight for the Bulldogs who have already taken to the air once. 34 yard completion from Green to Hilton. See what they do on third and eight. Green back to pass one more time. And he's got Conway on the out close to a first down. We'll see where they mark it. We talk about the poise from Ahmad Green so far. The redshirt freshman looks like he's been doing this his entire life. Drop back, hit him right in stride, make it him fourth and manageable. Obviously, in a big rivalry game, you haven't scored in a couple games. You want to see points on the board, but with the way the Citadel offense has moved the football, I'd love to see the aggressive play calling here from Coach Thompson. Now fourth and a little less than one. Bulldogs 7 of 11 on fourth downs. It's a 64% conversion rate. Green will take it himself. 
Ooh, it's, He's close. It's going to be right foot, left foot from that top judge. I was really surprised to not see them kind of hide right behind that left guard. Uh, it looked like Bison Jones, number 55, created a nice little hole there. And instead, Green decided to try to get it to the outside. A really nice pursuit from that Paladin defense. It looked like it was number 43 in Braden Gilby, first to contact. It looks like we're going to have timeout for a measurement. What do you think, Dave? Do you think he got there? Uh, it looks like <laughs> it's really right on the spot. I, I, you know, I don't want to say until we see the measurement, but couldn't be any closer right now. It's parents weekend here at Johnson Haygood. We're going to tell right away this place is going to erupt if they pick up a first down. So they extend the chain. Uh -huh. <laughs> and... Oh, oh he's man. just short. <laughs> by a couple of links to the chain. So Furman, with a hold, they'll take possession. It looked like it was number 71, Cameron Moe, with maybe a little, celebrate a little too early there on the chains, but that's got to be a huge drive killer for the Bulldogs. Paladin's looking to execute on it, but a really nice play there from Braden Gilby, a guy that's top five in team in tackles, but it's going to be something to note on that Furman defensive side today. They run 24 to 25 guys. They got 24 guys on that defense with five or more tackles. This is a very deep defense. You're going to see a lot of different guys personnel-wise today for them. There's Miller off play action. Not much there, though. Looks like it was Brian Horry. Excuse me, Brian Horn, the military captain with a nice tackle there on Miller to just keep it at two. But for Citadel, right, defensively, how do you stop what Furman was able to do on the first down? Look to see them bring a little bit more pressure, try to get Tyler Huff uncomfortable on this drive. Huff will give to Abrams up ahead to the 29-yard line. Set us up a third and manageable for Furman, about third and five. You know, we talked about what Furman was going to try to do running back by committee. Each guy doing so many different things. Almost looks like each guy will get a different uh, possession to kind of bring a little action to this Furman backfield. Harris goes in motion, huffing the gun. Plenty of time once again, looking for Miller, but it's intercepted by Dominic Poole. Poole has blockers in front, and he's taken down at the 40-yard line, so the Bulldogs get the turnover. The interception from Dominic Poole. 2021 SOCON Freshman of the Year comes up big for the Citadel. An absolute, we're going to see, a, it looks like I see a hanky there in the backfield. Interesting to see what this play is going to be called, but Poole has been an impact player since he stepped foot on this Citadel campus. Curious to see what the penalty is going to be. Yep. Whew. Citadel gets away with one there. Much needed. Again, Poole has made an impact on this campus since he stepped foot. Huff, maybe a throw that he wished he could have back because Poole kind of just read that thing the entire way. A really nice play and much needed for this Citadel momentum to try to get back in the game. So after the Bulldogs turn it over on downs, they get it right back off the interception from Dominic Poole. And they get it in great field position at the Paladin 40-yard line. Possession number two for the Bulldogs. Green was two for two for 41 yards, passing on the first possession. He'll hand off to the big B-back. That's Orlando Jones. Jones, a grad student from Fredericksburg, Virginia. Six carries for 15 yards last week at App. He's a transfer from SMU. I mean, he's a big bowling ball of a back. And when you talk about what Citadel's trying to do, right, death by paper cuts, you're trying to pick up three to four a, yard, a carry to extend the drive, pick up first down, stay on time. And this young man seems to always fall forward, which is exactly what they want out of their A-backs. Green in trouble here. Mm -hmm. As he's thrown down, that's Jack Barton, the redshirt junior from Alpharetta, Georgia. Green just looked a little hesitant whether to hold on or make the pitch. Sometimes the best play is just to continue to pick up little yards. If he'd have gone back to, excuse me, I think if Green, I'm curious to see as we get to these third and longs, right, will they continue to allow him to throw the football? He's looked really comfortable. In that Eastern Tennessee game, Dave, 
They went to a couple I formations where they almost look a little bit more comfortable to throw the ball. Curious to see if they go there on third down. Wallace and Hilton to the bottom of your screen. Green will take it himself on the keeper. Ooh. Has a nice pickup on third down. That'll set up a manageable fourth down situation for the Bulldogs. It'll be a fourth and three from the 33. It almost looked like a design quarterback draw. I just think that he saw that Furman was going to play back. They didn't have a quarterback spy. Sometimes you'll see that hybrid Jalen Miller. He's going to play that spur position for Furman today. He kind of looked and looked, dropped back into that zone coverage. Green saw and he took off running right away, making it a much more manageable fourth down. And it looks like they're going to go for it. Graves Billups out wide. Llewellyn behind Green. Again, fumbles the snap, and he's in trouble as he's getting tackled by the Paladins. And it's going to be another fourth down stand for Furman, which will send us to immediate timeout. Furman bending a little bit, but they're not breaking. <laughs> You're watching Southern Conference football on ESPN3. Ten for the Paladins from the 34, and the give is to Re Roberto, who bounces off a Bulldog, fights his way to a first down. Impressive run from Dominic Roberto. He picks up 11. You know, we've seen Huff obviously battle a lot of injuries. He makes a careless mistake on that last drive. Look to see them kind of lean on the big fellow, the Dominic Roberto, throughout this drive. He's just so difficult to tackle. You saw there, it's going to take a lot more than just arm tackles for this Citadel defense, who, by the way, they love their linebacking core. So that is going to be their big way. Watch these linebackers step up with these guys and try to slow the run down. It'll be Roberto once again. Picks up about... Four. And on the tackle, I believe it was the preseason second team, all SoCon guy. It was Carson Hatchett. Hatchett, 6'3", 260 pounds. It's a big defensive end looking to cause some havoc. I think if you saw him on that last interception, they created a little uncomfortable in that backfield. Look to see Siddle bring some pressure here late. And that one is Ooh. almost intercepted. It was broken up by Dominic Poole, and then Kyler Estes had a shot at it. Look, that's going to be one that the senior wishes he held on to, but a really nice play by Dominic Poole. Can we talk about how athletic this young man is? A, a member of the Citadel baseball team, he's doing it in the secondary, joining the likes of a really confident secretary for the secondary for this Citadel defense. Poole, explosive out of that backfield. 
Well, the Bulldogs returned nine of 11 starters on defense this season, including all four members of the secondary. That was before the injury to the safety, Wilson Hendricks. But they certainly have depth on that side of the ball. Third down for Furman. Huff looking for Harris, and it's complete, maybe a little bit short of the sticks. I think it's going to be short. I think it was a really nice play by the senior, Destin Mack, a guy that's got a lot of experience, the three-year starter. Plays nice press coverage, makes the tackle before the chains. Kind of in that gray area. You see Siddle and Coach, excuse me, do you see Furman and Coach Hendricks go for it? Got to imagine they do, especially with how well they've run the ball so far early in this game. Now it'll be about fourth and one from the Bulldog 47-yard line. Furman, five of nine this season on fourth down conversions. That's 56%. That's what will Clay Hendricks and Justin Roper dial up here yeah. on fourth down. And Dave, I think they're going to take the delay of game to allow their punter a little bit more room to kind of, you know, cough and corner, punt, try to pin the Dell. And, yep, it looks like the Siddle's going to play the chess match and decline the penalty, but it does appear that they are going to punt the football. So a fourth and one from Citadel territory. You know, Dave, we talked about how explosive the sophomore Dominic Poole was. We talk about the three-year starter on the other side, Destin Mack. What a beautiful culture that Coach Thompson has created in that secondary where a guy like Dominic Poole can come in with obviously a ton of athleticism and learn from a senior veteran like Destin Mack. They're pretty lucky to have those guys back there for him. Levy boots it to the right side of the field, and the fair catch is made by Poole at the 11. So that's where the Bulldogs will take over. 146 remaining here in the first quarter. Expedia members can save up to 30% by adding a hotel to a flight. So you can try every vision food. Knowing you got a sweet deal. One forty-six remaining in the first. Furman with a 7-0 lead here in Charleston. Third possession coming up for the Bulldogs. Their first two possessions have ended in Furman territory, both on fourth down. And Joku goes in motion. And they give up the middle. That's to Llewellyn. He jumps forward, picks up four. You know, for an offense that seemed to struggle in the last two weeks, you talk about the struggles offensively. They've moved the ball really well, Dave. It'll be about executing once they get down into the red zone, right? Staying on down, staying on time with the chains, obviously. But you've loved to see what you had out of the red shirt freshman Ahmad Green so far. Yeah, Green, two for two for 41 yards. The long completion to Christian Hilton for 34 on the first drive. That stalled in Furman territory. It'll be second and six for the Bulldogs. Llewellyn behind Green. Wallace out wide. That's Conway in motion. Green back to pass once again. Deep down the middle of the field. Jump ball. And Cooper Wallace playing some defense there, knocking it away from Travis Blackshear. That was a really nice play by Travis Blackshear. You could see him come over the top for a little bit of help, but I love the confidence that Coach Thompson has in Ahmad Green to really extend the play downfield, but, I mean, that's a really nice play by Travis Blackshear to break that thing up, but it does look like we're going to have a little bit of hankies on the field. So the block was inside the tackle box. And, of course, the new rules that have really affected the Citadel's offense. 
with those outside low block rules. Absolutely. I believe they cast that rule out in April, and it's completely changed the way that they try to play. You know, you talk about the Citadel, who right now, they don't, their passing game is not their strength, right? But with these new rules, getting to the perimeter for this offense run game has been a lot more of a challenge. So you have to take shots downfield in order to move the football. You've seen the struggles early on, and look to see them throw the ball a little bit more here today. Well, the Bulldogs will call timeout and talk it over here as they're facing a third and six situation at their own 15. Head coach for Furman is Clay Hendricks in his sixth season. 34 and 25 is a head coach at Furman. Eight and five record and FCS playoff appearance in his first season in 2017, earning SoCon Coach of the Year. Share of the SoCon Championship back in year two in 2018. Another appearance in the FCS playoffs in 2019. Looking to get back there this season, as are the Bulldogs, who made their last appearance back in 2016. You know, Coach Hendricks, when we spoke to him this week, he had mentioned about how he has been at Furman almost half of his lifetime. You know, his wife was friendly enough to remind him that he spent a tenure at Air Force for about nine to ten years. So he is very familiar with this type of offense. That kind of experience has gotten a lot of help in the prep work with the Citadel this weekend and years forward. Green incomplete on third and six. There was some contact there with Hilton. The pass was thrown behind him. You looked like... Blackshear kind of maybe got there a little bit early, but the throw behind him, so they're going to usually give the benefit of the doubt. Excuse me, that was not Blackshear. That was going to be the strong safety coming up and help. That was number three, Cam Brinson, but it does appear that we've got a pallet and down. And Brinson, the redshirt junior from Augusta, Georgia. Team high, eight tackles last week against Samford in coverage against Hilton. That's Seth Johnson getting up, the 6'1", 301-pound senior from Chattanooga, the nose guard. He'll walk it off. It'll be fourth and six for the Bulldogs, and back to punt, James Platt. Platt's a sophomore from Aiken, South Carolina, averaging 36.8 yards per punt this season. Big shoes to fill. Matt Campbell was an all-socom punter every season. And Platt gets it away. It's a spinning punt that bounces and will roll past the 50 and close to the 45-yard line. So Furman will take possession with good field position here. Absolutely. Hey, you know what? I, as we were doing our prep and our homework for these games, it's become my favorite part about this job. You talked about the shoes to fill at punter with the all-socon, but how about a little bit of love to the long snapper, Steel Judy, who is a th two-time All-American? I mean, I don't know how they developed some stats to do that, but got to show the long snapper some love today on this beautiful Saturday afternoon. Judy, the redshirt sophomore from Monk's Corner, South Carolina. So solid field position for the Paladins, under a minute remaining in the first. And the give is to Roberto, runs into several Bulldogs. Pick up a few on first down. Yeah, dear, we talked about the importance of controlling the line of scrimmage for the Citadel on really both sides of the football. Time of possession really important to both of these ball clubs. Obviously, being a triple option team that the Citadel is, it's it's you know it's essential for them to control the rock the entire afternoon. For Furman, though, six in the FCS of controlling the ball. Even in that loss against Clemson, a 34-17 loss, they controlled the football by almost 12 more minutes than the Tigers. This is a team that. You see the you know field position battle early on in this ball game. Furman kind of taking advantage there, thus the scoreboard reflecting that. And not much doing there on second down for Roberto as the clock ticks down here at the end of the first quarter. It'll be a third and seven situation for Furman when we get back from break. You're watching Southern Conference football on ESPN three. Ah, the SoCon's oldest rivalry dates back to 1913, back when Woodrow Wilson was president. Third and seven for the Paladins. Pressure on Huff, and he goes down. That's Hassan Jones, excuse me, Hassan Black, 6'3", 235 junior from Wyoming, Ohio. That's a huge play from this Citadel defense to get off the field on third down, and that's a 
a prime example we were actually talking about in the break. The defensive coordinator, Coach Grantham, on third downs, you're seeing a lot of almost stunted blitzes, right? They're running a simulated pressure. They're going to show six or seven guys, and you're going to see Hassan Black take advantage of it, and they're able to get through only rushing four or five. You're able to see they're creating a lot of pressure on Tyler Huff. Well, pool will allow that to bounce in front of them, and the Bulldogs will take over at the 26-yard line. So they put the pressure on Huff, and they get the sack. And this is a little team that doesn't get a lot of sacks. I believe just 10 on the season last year, so they're able to put pressure on Huff. The Bulldogs have really had a solid game plan against Furman quarterbacks for years. Tony Grantham has been able to dial up. Furman quarterbacks have not had impressive performances against the Bulldogs Last year's starting quarterback, Jace Wilson, I believe was 4 for 12 in that one. Absolutely. We saw Jace Wilson absolutely light up last week. Obviously, face value over 38 completions. That's a Furman record, right? Huff obviously struggled a little bit this week. Almost feels like the Citadel's got something on those guys. Well, the give is to Cooper Wallace, and he is tripped up by Matt Sachovka. The grad student from Fayetteville, North Carolina. Four tackles and a sack last week against Samford. He's a team captain. Has started 21 of 30 games played for the Paladins. So Chovka's a coach's kid, right? His dad was actually his high school coach. And it's a kid that's a really bright football mind. He's dealt with a lot of injuries in his Paladin time. But a guy that's been here since 2017 really understands what that Furman culture looks like in Coach Hendricks' locker room. Green has Wallace, delivers, and it'll be a nine-yard pickup. So th third and short coming for the Bulldogs. And as you're going to see here, Ahmad Green, a really nice ball. Cooper Wallace makes a really nice play, but the Citadel, they've kind of been stuck in this stagnant offense the last two weeks, and you love to see them kind of change things up. They go to a younger quarterback, obviously, with the undisclosed injury to Peyton Derrick, but Green stepping up in the moment, being his best when his best is needed so far today. And they give up the middle to Jones. He has enough for the first. Orlando Jones, a couple of seasons at SMU. Hutchinson Community College before that. A grad transfer for the Bulldogs. One of 11 grad transfers. That's the most Coach Thompson has ever had. Tells us that all of them have improved the roster. Of course, it's tough getting them ingrained in the culture here. The summertime helps. Seven were here in the summer. So that always helps with expectations. But with transfers now, Jack, you know, it's hard to get them here for a couple of different reasons. Coach Thompson was telling us selling Charleston and the grad programs, they're the easy part. But one thing we didn't even think of, you mentioned the cost of living being an issue. <laughs> Dave, I grew up here. I've come to terms. I might not ever be able to afford to live here, though. It's nice to hear Coach Thompson admit to that as well. <laughs> and it's Jones once again for a couple. Well, in the past, when you lose a guy past signing day, it's almost impossible to fill the spot. The Citadel, of course, lost a starting quarterback, punter. You have to go out and find the next best guy. They still have about 85% of, of their scholarship guys, developmental guys. Half of those guys were already here with them. They only brought in 11 true outsiders. The rest, Coach Thompson was telling us, all part of the system. Still the way they're going to try to win games here, but it's a challenge. Absolutely. You know Coach Hendricks on even the other side. These two teams hate each other, but both coaches alluded to it's they're a lot more similar than they appear. Obviously, the, these you know student athletes, you know life and way of living is completely different, but uh, these two programs a lot more similar than you think. And as they've kind of tried to navigate the NIL and the transfer portal, both programs struggle to get guys in that grad transfer system because of the standards, morality, and values that they have in place that their student athletes have to abide by. Furman has a new grad program, so that helps them a little bit in not just bringing in players, but keeping some of their players. Absolutely. It's such an academically inclined institution that – you have the opportunity, like a Tyler Huff, to come in from Presbyterian College, extend his academic you know, portfolio, and go get a master's from a really great school like Furman, but also give him the opportunity to play in a very rich historical tradition program like Furman. Third and seven for Green. He'll go deep. He's got Hilton once again, and the pass is broken up. That's Micah Robinson waving his fingers saying no. There it is. But the flag is thrown, so... This could be 
a penalty coming on Furman. Let's take another look. And that's the second time we've seen Hilton kind of fly that streak right up the middle of the field. And I was going to say, it did appear that it, I think it's going to be number 14, Michael Robinson. He may have gotten there just a hair too early. And it looks like they're going to get that call in their favor to extend the drive. So it'll be a 15-yard penalty on the Paladins. And a first down coming for the Citadel. The second time they've gone deep to Hilton, who's shown off some speed, Jack, and he's been open. You know, you talked about the injury to Tyler Cherry and how that's really affected the passing game for the Bulldogs. But think about just a year ago, Raleigh Webb, a guy that's with the Baltimore Ravens, a legend here at Johnson Hagen, Ryan McCarthy, another guy that was huge in that passing game. The Citadel looking for some new weapons on the outside. Christian Hilton really making his present felt here early. Uh, not much up the middle on first down. I believe we haven't said his name yet. I believe that was number 93, Jack Barton, the red shirt junior. He's been really instrumental so far in that backfield. Lined up next to the preseason all SoCon second team pick, Cameron Coleman. Those guys have created some mayhem in that backfield, but so far it's been the Citadel passing game that's kind of had Furman off balance. Well, that was the B-back, Braden Walker, who got the carry, the junior from Lexington, South Carolina. Bulldogs have a stable of backs that they'll use. Four different B backs, four or five different A backs. And Joku goes in motion. And they give again up the middle. That's Walker. Not much, maybe a yard or two. You know, as we go to third and long here, right? They were behind the chains on first down, second and long. Watch them go back to the I formation, Dave. We talked about how out of that I formation they feel a little bit more comfortable pass. Maybe a play action here to set up the third down. Maybe take a shot downfield. Because, as again, we've seen Ahmad Green throw the ball over the ballpark so far today, which is pretty uncharacteristic of the Bulldogs. But look to see them go back to I formation here on third and long and maybe take another shot. They use that formation successfully against ETSU. Coach Thompson said they've always had a small I formation package in the offense. They expanded it more this summer. Not in it right now. Third and eight. Green back to pass once again. He's flushed out. Green. He'll take it himself. Ooh. Scrambles down to the 37-yard line. It'll set up a fourth down situation for the Bulldogs. Fourth and short. We want to shout out the B-back. That was a huge block on the outside by Braden Walker to allow Green to extend the play with his feet. It was a really nice play by number seven on the inside, Matt Sokovka, a guy we've already talked about already, to kind of blow that play up through the middle of the field. But a huge outside block by Braden Walker from the B-back to extend the play, and Green really shifty so far tonight. Well, we have a Paladin down on the field, so we're going to take a media timeout. 8.50, let's go in the first half. Furman leads 7-0. We decided it's time to put a different kind of power tool in your hands. Store Mode in the Home Depot app gives you in-store tools made to help you get more done. To guide you every step of the way and explore products quickly with the scan. That way you get the top brands at the best prices without missing a beat. It's made for doing. Download the Home Depot app and see how doers get more done. The Bulldogs are 0 for 2 so far today on fourth downs. Fourth and three situation here in Furman territory. Green making his first collegiate start. Will toss to Cooper Wallace fighting. 
And he is close to the first down. We'll see there where they mark it. You know, we talked about how important it was going to be for Citadel to make plays on the perimeter. That's a huge play from Cooper Wallace to extend the drive. And more importantly, it seemed like on those fourth downs early in the game, you saw maybe a little mishandling on the snap from center Mike Martellucci and obviously the new quarterback, Ahmad Green. Nice for him to almost seem like the game's slowing down for him a little bit. He's got a little bit more composed back there. But for the Citadel, this is, you know, obviously their third, fourth down try. They finally convert on one. But is it? The question now, can they execute on this side of the field? And they've had a couple of long drives in the games that they've been shut out, the last two shutouts at Mercer and at App State. Just haven't converted when they've gotten close. This is Green to the outside. Has a solid pickup on first down. I, I, I got to applaud Dan Sciani, though. It's a really nice first down play from Mod Green, but Dan Sciani makes a huge tackle there because if he is able to break that arm tackle from Sciani, I think Mod Green's got a lot of turf to run in front of him. It's a nice play on the outside from the linebacker to stay home, stay within assignment. But, you know, we talked about this Citadel team. At App State, obviously a 49-point blowout. But in that third quarter, they controlled the ball for 11 minutes, just not able to punch it in. This is a team that's able to move the ball. It just seems right now they got to find a way. Who's going to be the guy that wants to get into the end zone? Second and five for the Bulldogs. And the handoff up the middle, spinning out. That's Llewellyn. He's got some daylight. And Llewellyn taken down at the 14-yard line. The second effort gets a big gain for the Bulldogs. And, you know, we talked about the importance of breaking the big play. And there it is. There's an arm tackle from number 44, Luke Clark, the outside linebacker. And he makes him beat him because he just finds the way to keep the feet churning. And now, as they enter the red zone, what will the Citadel be able to showcase? Look to see maybe a little misdirection, try to keep firm and sleeping. An uncharacteristic stat for the Bulldogs. Just one rushing touchdown this season. It belongs to Nakem Njoku. He'll look to double that total on this drive. Wallace goes in motion, and the give up the middle is to Llewellyn. Tackled by Skiana. And what do I know up here? We've seen a lot of misdirection, a lot of passing plays in that eye formation. They've allowed Green to throw the ball on the other side of the field. Maybe that was just a switch field position. Maybe they go back to their bread and butter in the red zone. Maybe I was completely off guard, but as they go back to Ellen, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Just keep giving it to the big fella. They bring in Jay Graves Billups, the redshirt freshman from Mobile, Alabama. Second and seven for the Bulldogs. And that is Graves Billups who gets the carry. Nine carries for 38 yards. Two receptions for 42 yards last week at App. His season long is a 31 yard run against ETSU. 81 yards rushing coming into today on the season. And again, you've seen it out of that flex bone offense. They've been able to stay on time. Now it's a very third and manageable and we talked to Coach Thompson about it. Obviously, this is a team that utilizes all four downs. You want points as you haven't had them in a couple games, but I got to imagine this is a four down situation for this Bulldog offense. Graves Bullops now out wide at the top of your screen. Green will take it himself behind Llewellyn, squeezing through, and it looks like he'll have a first down for the Bulldogs. It'll be first and goal from the three. We know we saw it on that first possession on that fourth and three play. It looked like Oh, his, that helmet came off, so they're going to have to go to another quarterback for just to play for Ahmad Green. And it looks like it is going to be number 13, Peyton Derrick, coming out to relieve him for a play. But to Ahmad Green's point, it looks like the game is starting to get a little bit slower for him as here comes Peyton Derrick. So Derrick checks in with Cooper Wallace. Peyton Derrick, the starter for the Bulldogs, not starting today. We were told an undisclosed injury is available in an emergency situation. We have one here. Derek under center. And he'll give up the middle. Llewellyn is stuffed. That's Braden Gilby, the redshirt senior from St. Petersburg, Florida. You know, it's interesting defensively what Furman was able to do there. They really stacked the box, obviously, in the red zone tight. But with Ahmad Green's run threat, dual threat, you know, they didn't have to play the outside, right? Braden Gilby kind of slides in, meets him in the A-gap, and makes a really nice play. Green now back in for the Bulldogs after the cameo appearance from Peyton Derrick. 
It'll be the big B-back Orlando Jones behind Green. Green, not much room, nowhere to go. And the tackle from Alex Meyer, the redshirt freshman from Fleming Island, Florida. That'll be third and goal for the Citadel. You know, we applauded Green for the patience on the last second down play to extend the drive. Obviously, there may be a little too antsy to try to bounce that thing into the end zone. Would have liked to seen him kick it to the perimeter and maybe use that B-back all right behind him as an option. But on third and five here, the Bulldogs clearly need some momentum and some mojo. Would love to see if they can't find a way to the end zone. Maybe one of those tight ends sneaking out into the flats. Maybe a pass here on third and five. Green drops back to pass. Running out of room, he'll fire over the head of the tight end, Ben Brockington. Brockington, a converted offensive tackle, now a tight end. And SoCon all freshman team member back in 2020 playing both left tackle and right tackle. He was a swing tackle, now a and big I, tight I, end. With how efficient he's been throwing the football today, I'm not surprised that they went to the air. Ben Brockington, that's a big guy's dream as we're going to see the Citadel field goal unit on, but I'd like to see the creativity. They didn't just stick to the flex bone quarterback sneak, but the Citadel hopefully looking to add some points here on this Saturday evening. Brockington had his jersey pulled just a bit by Gilby. Kintner's kick is up and good, so the Bulldogs are on the board. 3-12 remaining in the first half. Furman leads the Citadel 7-3. Well, it was a long drive aided by a pass interference penalty that results in a Colby Kintner field goal. Bulldogs on the board as they trail 7-3 late in the second half. Well, Jack, the Bulldogs drove downfield. They got points out of it, so the shutout streak ends. They've got to feel good about what they've seen out of this redshirt freshman, Ahmad Green, and the kind of poise he's shown early on in this rivalry ballgame. Again, it's been two weeks. I'm sure they're tired of hearing it. They've broken the scoreless streak, and what a way to get it. Obviously, you want to get in the end zone and get six, but three's got to feel good so far, especially after that early drive from the Paladins. The new tailback, Kendall Thomas, behind Huff, who's out of the gun. Huff back to pass, he's in trouble. Got it away just in time to Thomas as that was Hassan Black putting the pressure on Tyler Huff. Black has really emerged this season, the junior from Wyoming, Ohio. Team leader in tackles, they've moved him from the outside to the inside, that time on the rush. He got to Huff. He is making his presence felt this fine Saturday afternoon, but I'm really excited to see this sophomore running back, Kendall Thomas, here go because Coach Hendricks really raved about him, and there he goes. Yeah, a ton of speed. Runs into Beverly. He's going to be about a yard or two short of the first down. You know, we talked about Dominic Roberto and Devin Abrams are going to get the bulk amount of snaps, right? We've seen Kendall Thomas in the special teams unit returning kicks and punts. But Coach Hendricks raved about how this is probably the fastest guy that they've got on their roster. Dealt with an injury right at the end of the camp, so he's missed a lot of the games early on. But he's a guy that they're super excited about his future in purple. That's Miller who goes in motion. Huff on play action. He'll loft one and completes. How about That's Gissinger, the backup tight end. Transfer from Michigan State. And you're going to see third reception of the season. They use the two-time All-American as a decoy. He's the blocking tight end there. As that grad transfer from Michigan State is able to just kind of sneak through that line of scrimmage. And they're able to pick up a much-needed third down after the Sindel really elongated the drive through the second quarter. And Gissinger more a traditional tight end will play in line. And completing this time to Joshua Harris, a nice pickup for the Paladins. And all of a sudden, it's Tyler Huff getting into a rhythm. You know, as the second quarter is here now coming to an end, I'd like to see Furman get back to what they did so well in that first drive. And it's what we talked about, facilitating to all the weapons, putting the ball in all of their weapons' hands, allowing them to do the rest of the work. Huff once again dancing around. Now he'll scramble. A flag is thrown. Estes on the stop. Let's see what the flag is. Again, our referee today is Jeff Page, having a discussion with Jay Crockett. 
I'll get word from Paige. So that's holding on Anderson Tomlin, the left tackle, Richard Sr. from Birmingham, Alabama. He's a preseason All-American, All-SoCon performer. And you can see there in the replay, he got his money's worth. He held them pretty good. Lucky he didn't get those hands underneath that face mask. He had hands to the face. But Furman's twin towers up front. Anderson Tomlin and Pearson Toomey, both first, season, first team all SoCon picks. A grad transfer quarterback's dream to have guys up front like that. Well, Kendall Dean makes the reception for Furman. Good pickup on first and 20. Dean, a grad student from Winston-Salem, North Carolina. Season high, 10 receptions for 97 yards last week against Samford. He's a transfer from James Madison. Talk about an FCS program with have a time lot of rich call, history. Talk about, a, uh, talk about a program with a lot of rich history in James Madison, but a little grad transfer, a grad transfer love there. He missed 2021 due to injury, 36 games, 20 starts at JMU. Hey, hey Michaela, did Michaela, can you hear us? Like, I can't. Oh, Jesus. Hey, Mikhail, can you hear me? Uh, this this is Jack. Is there, this is Jack. Is there any way that we could mute um, y'all's conversation? Minute 31 remaining here in the first half. Second and seven upcoming for the Paladins. Huff, throw is low, but the pass is caught by Miller. The clock will continue to run. Plenty of time for the Paladins who still have two timeouts. Absolutely, and similar to what they did on that first drive, right? Their MO is they like to control the time of possession. But on that first drive, they went down and scored really quickly. Obviously, they've gone at up-temple, no huddle offense here with just under a minute to play. It almost seems like they've been more effective that way. It'll be a third and four situation, and it looks like we're going to have another timeout called. So we're going to take a break with 103 remaining in the first half. Furman leading Citadel 7-3. They're looking for... Urgent Fansville. Hurry! It's almost kickoff. I am. Oh, they logged me out! What's the password? Okay, it's P23XR Ampersand. I miss basic cable. Dr. Pepper, the one fans deserve. Three, two, one, go. 
Third and four from the 29. Tyler Huff, 10 of 14 from 93 yards and a pick so far. In motion, that's Dean. Play action, Huff rolling out under pressure, looking for Miller, and it's picked off. That's Destin Mack who steps in front of Miller. Second pick for the Bulldogs today. And that takes points away from Furman. Well, that's gonna be a pressure pick because he had Ryan Miller wide open coming right down the seam of the field. But it's the pressure from number 44, Carson Hatchett, that causes that air throw. And that's a huge interception from the senior, Destin Mack. That's a huge play because it truly is a seven point swing because I really do think Ryan Miller, if Huff has the time, is gonna be wide open in the end zone. Mack had an interception earlier this season against ETSU, the preseason first team all SOCON selection. Five picks last season. And he's dangerous after the interception, third in FCS and return yards last year as well. Well, 51 seconds now for the Bulldogs to do something. They'll have the ball their own 21. With two timeouts, I'm curious to see if they take a couple shots and try to steal some points at the end of the half. Green unable to break a tackle. That's number 43, Braden Gilby. Comes into today second on the team in tackles. Big game, Jack, a couple of weeks ago at CSU. 11 tackles, three for a loss for Gilby. He's just one of those guys that always has his nose on the football. You talk about that Paladin swarm. It seems like when this defense is playing well, they're playing collectively as a unit. But it does appear we're going to see one of those Blocks below the waist outside of the tackle box. That's going to basically back up this settle drive. But to your point about Gilby, well, that Furman defense is playing well. They're playing collectively as a unit. And Gilby, similar to a guy like Dan Schiani, those are those guys that kind of pioneer and captain that Furman defense. On the penalty, the Bulldogs will back it up. 45 seconds remaining. They'll probably take an even more conservative approach now from their own 10. Absolutely, and Citadel fateful after that first drive and the last couple of weeks that they've had kind of had a dirt. I'm sure we're feeling pretty down, but the poison confidence that they've seen at what might be the future at quarterback at Ahmad Green, I got to be feeling pretty good going into halftime, just down by four. And the give is to Cooper Wallace, breaks a tackle. Oof. Now he's wrapped up by about four Paladins, dumped down. Forward progress taking him to the 13. And there's a name that we haven't yet said today. Expect to see a lot of him in the second half. He had that play uh, pass interference call. That was Hugh Ryan in on the tackle, coming up from that free safety position, making a big time hit. He actually leads his Paladin defense in tackles. He's a really smart kid, an all academic SOCON player, but he's a name we will most definitely be saying to make an impact play in the second half. So the Paladins get the touchdown in their first drive of the game, the Citadel. Responds with three, and that's where we stand at halftime. Furman leads the Citadel 7-3 from Charleston.
Say cheese. I was feeling cute. I might delete these later. Don't delete them. I look good. Crop yourself out. But my hair does look amazing. Cheese it, official sponsor of the college football playoff. It's halftime from Charleston. Furman leads the Citadel 7 to 3. The first touchdown for the Paladins. That's all they have, Jack. It's been Bulldogs since then. A couple of deep passes, one to Christian Hilton. Absolutely, and for Citadel, the story's been what they've been able to do on the defensive side of the football. Their stars have showed up to play this afternoon on Rivalry Weekend. The likes of Hassan Black, he's really caused a lot of disruption in that Furman backfield. But the two picks from the freshman All-American, Dominic Poole, and the first team all SoCon selection, Desimac, those have been guys that have made the big time plays. You see Hassan Black with a huge shack, really only their second of the year, but Black has been a guy that they've really leaned on. It's a big linebacker from a big pedigree, and they've gotten some really nice production on the offensive side as well. Well, Tony Grantham's game plan has certainly worked for the Bulldogs. They're hanging in. They trail 7-3. to All they've given up was that first drive touchdown, and they'll try to take the lead in the second half. More from Johnson Haygood Stadium when we come back. On a Fansville homecoming by Dr. Pepper. Surprise! CJ, oh, we weren't expecting you. Hey, buddy, what are you doing here? Hey, go state. You replaced me with star quarterback Bryce Young? We could never replace you. Here's your Dr. Pepper mom. Mom? <laughs> it's just a silly nickname. <laughs> you came up with dad for me. <laughs> here you go, kid. Huh. They're my family now, CJ. Next time on Fansville. Hey, brother, get out of my room! Dr. Pepper, the one fans deserve. And welcome back to Johnson Haygood Stadium. It's halftime between the Citadel and Furman. The Paladins lead 7 to 3. SoCon's oldest rivalry dates back to 1913 when Woodrow Wilson was the president. The cost of a first class stamp. Only two cents, Philadelphia A's. Not the Oakland A's, Philadelphia A's were your World Series champions. Harvard, of course, the powerhouse in college football. Hottest de degree recorded, 134 degrees in Death Valley, California. You know, did we saw it going into the second quarter. I wanted to rehash this graphic. Philadelphia A's, as a huge baseball fan, the Phillies riding a huge high after last night's win, but the Philadelphia A's, I love that. Love that brain of yours. <laughs> and if you were alive for that game between the Citadel and Furman in 1913, congratulations, because you are at least 109 <laughs> years old. Someone called Guinness World Records. Uh, they've got a sight to see, man. But the rivalry has lived up to its task, to say the least. Williams will kick it away here to open up the second half. Graves, Billups, and Wallace. It'll be Cooper Wallace. On the return, Wallace, a flag is down. Took it out to about the 18, but we'll wait on word from the referee. And on command, on the tackle, that's your boy number six, Ryan Hugh, who's just an absolute ball hawk for that firm and secondary. And it'll be an illegal block in the back on the Bulldogs, so they'll back up even further. And it'll be first down for the Citadel. The Citadel in the first half. Rushed for 69 yards, passed for 53. Unlikely balanced offense from the Bulldogs. <laughs> I was going to say, when's the last time a first half has looked like that? But 
as a Citadel Bulldog faithful fan, you had to have loved to seen the really the maturation process of Ahmad Green in just that first half. I mean, when you look at what's to come, right, and what was in that Appalachian State ball game, a 49 nothing beating, but that third quarter, right, if you look back at what they did in that third quarter, they controlled the ball for 11 minutes, looked to see them do that, but really punched the ball in the end zone this go-round. And Joku goes in motion. Green loses the handoff. Ball is still alive. Who has it? Paladins say they have it, and they do. Oh, what a big break for Furman to start the second half. They're going to get the ball inside the five, uh -oh. and now... Uh, now it looks like it may remain with the Bulldogs. Here's the deal. I think he may have recovered the ball while on the ground. That's the big fella, number zero, Cameron Coleman, that kind of ripped it away. But it does appear that they said that Ahmad Green recovered the football after that botch snap and then recovered and then was punched out but was on the net. So the Bulldogs yep. dodged the largest bullet possible. Almost a turnover inside their five to begin the second half. And it's again, it's the third time today we've seen maybe a little miscommunication between the center, number 57, Mike Bartolucci, and that new quarterback, Ahmad Green. He's been really effective today, but kind of seeing some fresh mistakes take place here early. Conway in motion, and the give up the middle. That's Llewellyn, Whew. makes his way down to the seven. Sam Llewellyn, red-shirted here in 2018. He's been at the Citadel for five seasons. Game-winning 57-yard touchdown run last year at Chattanooga. One of a number of B-backs that they will use, Logan Billings as well. We've seen Braden Walker and Orlando Jones. Absolutely, and it would be interesting. We talked about those splits at halftime. Third and long, do they try to allow their punter to kind of remove itself to punt underneath the shadow of its own end zone, or do they take a shot and try to pick up the third down in the air because Ahmad Green has been effective throwing the football today. Green back to pass. He'll loft one, has Conway wide open, makes the catch. Oh, the connection between Green and Conway, and it'll be a first down for the Citadel. And it looked like there was a little miscommunication in the secondary. Michael Robinson playing press coverage. He's going to allow the strong safety, Cam Brinson, to step in, but a little bit of miscommunication on the back end. And excuse me, it was actually Travis Blackshear, not Michael Robinson, but again, Ahmad Green absolutely throwing darts today. The passing game. How about that from the Bulldogs on this rivalry Saturday? Yeah, second catch for Ricky Conway. And we mentioned Tyler Cherry injured, so who will fill in for him? Hilton's done a great job at wide receiver, but the A-backs can play out wide as well, especially Conway. First and 10. Option for Green. He'll pitch it to Graves Billups, who gets some room on the outside. And he'll pick up about... Four or five. A really nice tackle on the outside from Cam Brinson to allow that play to not go for any more than those three yards. But there's that typical Citadel offense where they're going to try to chip away three yards at a time. But maybe they reevaluate because Green has really thrown the ball effectively this afternoon. Green now four of seven for 82 yards. And this is a guy in Ahmad Green... It was a 3,000-yard passer and 3,000-yard rusher in high school. He's a top five finalist for Mr. Football in South Carolina out of May River High School in Bluffton, although he lists his hometown as Baltimore. Born and raised in Baltimore, I believe he moved down to South Carolina in middle school. Absolutely. And, hey, a little Baltimore comparison. He moves a little bit like Lamar. He's got that almost middle infield type delivery from your quarterback that Lamar has kind of displayed at the NFL level. I think from Citadel, Citadel Faithful, obviously thinking about grad transfer Peyton Derrick going down with that injury, but you love to see what maybe the future might hold and what Ahmad Green's shown you this afternoon. His skill set a little bit similar to Jalen Adams, the former quarterback for the Citadel who ran for 144 oh. yards. Fumble here, and the ball is picked up and recovered by Furman. That's number 97, Bryce Stanfield on the recovery. Well, let me tell you, there was a question about the last fumble. There's not a question here because Travis Blackshear absolutely lays the boom on this play. The first team SoCon selection with a huge impact play to change the momentum here in the second half. 
So the Paladins thought they had the fumble recovery inside the five. Instead, they're going to have a fumble recovery at the 32. A big turnover. And Furman in business here early in the third quarter. God, just the instinctual play from Blackshear to shoot up from that position. He missed the block on the outside. Blackshear made him pay for it. The give is to Roberto. Bounces off several Bulldogs and makes his way down to the 26. We haven't said his name yet today, but Kyler Estes is that Mike linebacker for the Citadel Bulldogs. He's the leader. He really pioneers that defense. They going to go as he goes. He's a hard-nosed football player, a really smart kid in the classroom. He was the first at contact there, but we see why that 230-pound running back on the back end for the Paladins is tough to tackle. He just always seems to be falling forward. Roberto, who ran for 44 in the first half, has some daylight. They won't catch him. Touchdown, Furman. And it just, I mean, completely untouched. Maybe a missed assignment on that defensive line. It looked like maybe Jay Smith missed that spot, but Dominic Roberto makes him pay for it. You're going to see, yep, they seal Kyler Estes right there on the outside. And Dominic Roberto, I mean, that's going to be the easiest 25-yard touchdown of his career there, Dave. Yeah, and credit the blocking of Ryan Miller on Chris Beverly as the seas just parted for the Paladins. Absolutely, we talk about what that young man's future might look like at the next level. We said his name quite a bit in the first half. Haven't heard a lot since, but Ryan Miller at the next level, he can run it, he can block. But Dominic Roberto being that impact back here in the second half. Well, this is an opportunistic defense for Furman. They forced turnovers all season long, and that time, Jack, they turn a fumble recovery into seven. And again, cannot give enough credit to Travis Blackshear, but you can almost see that Citadel defense looked a little deflated after the unreal play from the preseason SoCon cornerback. But again, how does the Dell respond now, right? It, it, they've moved the ball well today, but it's been their ineffectiveness to score in the red zone. Look to see maybe a little misdirection out of their B-backs. A couple bodies to look out for. Cooper Wallace has been a stud with the ball in his hands. Maybe look for a little misdirection with him at a attack. Graves Billups on kickoff return. Whew. He's tackled by Hugh Ryan. I'm telling you, that's back-to-back -back special teams play. We talked about it right before we went into halftime about how it wasn't a name we said a lot, but there's a reason that just, this young man is leading the team in tackles. He's made his impact felt on the special teams unit, and he sure as heck has done it at that free safety spot as well. Ryan and Brinson, the safeties for the Paladins, a talented pairing. Blackshear and Robinson at the corners. And they have guys in, in Morris and Yates who can start for a lot of other teams as well in the corner. They have a deep secondary, does Furman. First and 10 for the Citadel 
from their 22. And the handoff is to Orlando Jones. Nothing doing. No gain on the play. God, can you imagine trying to get in the way of Mr. Orlando Jones? That's a big body running downhill. I wouldn't want to tackle him. 5'10", <laughs> 242. An important player in the second half. He can really wear down a defense. Especially, we talked about the importance of getting out to, you know, a hot start and getting the lead early on in the game. But that's a guy that's going to wear down a defense as the game goes on. Because in that fourth quarter, when maybe the defense is, you know, hands on hips, try getting the way of Orlando Jones. But obviously, the Dell playing from behind, they're going to need to take a couple big shots, similar to what they did in the first half, to spark a big drive. Green back to pass. He'll loft this to the Furman sideline as nobody open for the Citadel. You know, we talked about it in the you know, beginning part of the game. It's going to be interesting to see what this Furman team does throughout the SOCON. We talk about the depth on the defensive side of the ball. Coach Hendricks made note that they've got 24 guys with five tackers or more. They will mix and match personnel as the game goes on. They really rely on the depth, especially up front. Like even, for example, you're going to see number 40, Xavier Stevens, the sophomore. Number 94, Seth Johnson. They have no problem because they really believe in how deep this defense can go. Well, it's third down defense now for Furman. The pass is caught by Wallace, and he loses possession of the football, and it's picked up by Cam Brinson. Brinson thrown down inside the 20, and it looks like we could have another turnover for the Bulldogs. We will. Two turnovers early in the third quarter. Let's take another look. Green connects with Wallace. Oof. I don't know, man. It looked like number 36, Jalen Miller, comes in late, pokes that ball loose. But I got to think, I think Cooper Wallace may have had that knee down when that ball got jarred loose. It's going to be really interesting to see if they go take another look at it. But Cooper Wallace trying to extend the ball, pick up the first down. And Jalen Miller, that's where he's going to play that spur spot. He's a hybrid, makes a huge play. I'm really surprised they're not going to take a look, though. It was Callie Chiswick on the tackle, the redshirt junior from Auburn, Alabama. His dad, of course, is former Auburn head coach Gene Chiswick, now with University of North Carolina. And now they are going to take another look, Jack. I know, and I think if we get a closer look, again, Chiswick makes a really nice play. Again, another name that we're going to use when it comes to personnel on the defensive side of the ball. But if we go to replay here, you're going to see, I believe it's Jalen Miller come in late, and he's going to jar it loose, but I'm... God, it's about as bang-bang as it gets. When they go to the booth, it'll be really interesting to see if it's enough to overturn. But I don't know. 14-3 with the way that they run their offense. Imagine if it's fourth and short, if they try to go for it, this could be a huge swing in this ballgame. I mentioned this is an opportunistic defense. They have something called Turnover Tuesday in practice. Coach Vaughn challenges, challenges them to be plus two in turnovers. If they're not, they have to do up-downs. If they are, coach does the up-downs, and that's certainly motivating for the players. <laughs> we got to get highlights of that kind of stuff. Are you kidding me? I'd love to see Coach Hendricks hitting a couple up-downs every Tuesday. Up-downs, not fun. <laughs> Always used as a form of punishment for us back in the day. I was going to say reminiscent or remember the Titans action, but today the Furman Paladins would be doing some up-downs with a couple interceptions on their side of the ball. So the ball will stay with Furman. Let me take one last look. Well, Brinson didn't fumble at the end of the play. <laughs> it was Brinson on the recovery. Miller poked it loose. Chiswick on the tackle. Three Paladins combine on the turnover. Excellent team defense. And now the give to Roberto, who's had some success here in the third quarter. A stiff arm, and Roberto fights his way down the sideline to the five-yard line. We talk about how a guy can really wear a defense out. A 231-pound running back that runs a legitimate 4 5 40, that's going to be tough to tackle, especially late in the game. And you're going to see that really those twin towers we talked about up front for Furman. I mean, on that right tackle side, Pearson Toomey, who's battled injuries throughout his career. But there's a reason he was a preseason all SOCON pick. He created a huge hole, and Roberto hit it. One touchdown already today. He gets the handoff here, plows his way forward, and bullies his way in for the touchdown. 
unreal. Watch the feet never stop moving. We talked about it on the outside. That time, they're going to go right behind the left guard, Jacob Johanning, Coach Hendricks Mendel. Watch, that's a big time hit, and you're going to see left tackle Anderson Tomlin with an ice hole there on the left side as well. But Johanning, Coach Hendricks said that he might be the most athletic offensive lineman he's got. But Roberto, with the feet continuously moving, is such a load to try to tackle. And that's going to extend that Paladin lead. Roberto took on three Bulldogs on that carry. Found his way into the end zone. And the extra point from LePro is up and good. So Furman has opened up a 21-3 lead over the Citadel. You're watching college football on ESPN3. Dominic Roberto has his second touchdown of the day. Furman has a 21-3 lead over the Citadel. 9-20 remaining in the third quarter. Two quick touchdowns, Jack, for the Paladins to open up the second half. Absolutely. And turnovers have been the bugaboo so far in this second half. But Furman doing an excellent job of executing and taking advantage of them. Now the Citadel has to respond in a big way. And this kickoff. Bulldogs have to be careful here as it remains in bounds. <laughs> This is a much needed play from number 47, Jay Lagrun on the special teams unit. Almost the world's longest onside kick. That would have been not what the Citadel drew up, but a happy accident for the Paladins there. They wanted it to go out of bounds so they can get the field position, but it did not take a friendly bounce. So the Bulldogs will have the ball at their own 15. First and 10. Try to hold on to it this time. Turnovers have been the problem. Almost had one inside the five to start this half. Instead had a fumble still inside of their territory and then another one on the next drive. That's Wallace in motion. He'll get the toss. Wallace is hit in the backfield by number 36, Jalen Miller, who was involved in the last turnover, makes another big play. And it looks like the difference so far in this second half was where Citadel, where they've struggled a bit this year, had some you know, some success on the perimeter so far in the second half. Jalen Miller, again, we talked about that spur position, that hybrid safety linebacker. They've been able to sniff out that play on the outside. They're taking away that three to five yard gain where they easily had it in the first half. Furman making some excellent halftime adjustments so far here early in the third. Second and 13 for the Bulldogs. And the pitch to Wallace, not much room along the outside. Picks up maybe a couple. And a third and long situation upcoming for the Bulldogs, which is not a position that they want to be in. You know, we talked about the discipline that it requires to play a flex bone, triple option, you know, wing team, whatever you want to call it, whatever the triple option variant it is, you have to be wildly disciplined. And what Coach Hendricks has instilled in this Furman culture, this football program, it was my favorite line all week. He mentioned it before the Charleston Southern matchup two weeks ago. He said that we are a white collar school with a blue collar football program. And boy, is this defense putting that to the case today. They are really playing excellent football here to this afternoon. On third and 13, Green steps up. Now he'll take off down the sideline. Run out of bounds and he'll be short of the first down. So we'll have a punting situation coming for the Citadel. It's gonna be about fourth and five. Where we also saw Mon Green have some success in that first half. Dave was his ability to extend the play with his feet. You're going to see here he's flushed out of the pocket for number zero, Cameron Coleman. But the difference so far in the second half has been they've almost played like a spy, a spy rover position. You see there Bryce McCormick just kind of hanging out and making sure Ahmad Green couldn't pick up the first down with his feet. They wanted him to play it in front. They ducked it underneath. A really nice play by McCormick to chase Green, the speedy Green, out of bounds. Here's Chiswick on the return. He's brought down by Chris Beverly. And now some pushing and shoving. And we do have a penalty flag down on the field. A couple of them. I'm thinking one is going to be a late hold on Furman, but obviously some extracurriculars after the play. You see we've got 
uh, number 16 there, uh, Charles Ingram the fifth, getting up in some antics. You know, you don't see that kind of emotion, obviously, out of number three, Melvin Ravenel. Looked like he was pushing and shoving there on the sidelines as well. It'll be important now for the Citadel, obviously frustrated with the way the last couple of weeks have gone. This game seemingly starting to get out of reach for them to remain dif disciplined. It just takes one stop here. And coming in, a dislike between these two programs. You can't have two more different schools, firm and private, beautiful and plush, Citadel, you know, public school, military college, barracks. You know, we did, I mentioned it earlier in the ball game. we talked about the hatred because of how different these experiences are for these student athletes with where they go to school. Obviously, at the end of the day, um, what they have to do recruiting wise and what they build program wise is very similar, right? You know, Furman has to do things very different because of the standards that their students are held in the classroom. And then on the other side as well for the Citadel, obviously you know what kind of morals and values that this university instills in their student athletes. So it is a bit of an issue uh, for their student athletes at the end of the day. Still a waiting word on the flags here. And now they're going to give Clay Hendricks an explanation. Let's see if we can find it, Jack. Oh, maybe they're questioning if his knee was on the ground. Well, I saw a push from behind on number 16, Charles Ingram for Furman. And then after the play, there's Ingram again. But if Chiswick's knee was down on the catch, then the block in the back would then be tacked on from where the spot of the foul was instead of where the play ended up. And then you tack on all of the extracurriculars afterwards. You know, I went to public high school. The math part of that, trying to add up all these yardages, I'm sure is what the referees are starting to add up as well. Well, Coach Hendrick is still getting an explanation from our officiating crew. Another look, Jack. And there's that push. And then after the play, <laughs> well, couldn't get it all from that replay, but Coach Hendricks <laughs> still getting an explanation, which makes you think. But it's the same two personnel involved. Obviously, you've got Ingram on the back end of that play with the block in the back. Well, face mask. Well, everyone's confused here at Johnson Hagen well. Stadium, including maybe our <laughs> officiating crew. The boos are raining down from the fans. One more look. Well, we didn't see the face mask, but you're going to see number 16, Jack up number three, Melvin Ravenel. Sometimes it's not whoever hits first, it's whoever gets caught. And obviously, Ravenel gets caught at the end of the play, and that's what the referees see. That's where they're going to see the penalty tacked on at the end of the play. Citadel Faithful obviously upset with the call on the field, but I do believe they got it right. But it's nice to know that there was as much confusion down there as there was up here. <laughs> well, when all said and done, Furman will have possession, and they'll have it at their own 42. Again, getting back to this matchup, when we asked Coach Clay Hendricks about it, he said, you know, it's a rivalry matchup. We can always judge by how we practice. Had a good midweek practice coming off the disappointing loss last week. They did not play up to standards really the last couple of weeks, even in the win against CSU. And the focus has really been trying to get ready for this big game, hoping to finally have a good game at the quarterback position. We mentioned that the Citadel has held their quarterbacks in check the last few seasons. The run from Thomas as he slices to his left for a few. Um... But the numbers haven't been good for Furman in this matchup the last few years. They're looking good right now, leading 21-3. to Absolutely, and I think you can see 
this team taking on the persona of its head coach, Coach Hendricks, widely regarded and respected throughout the conference and really throughout the country with his experience and timeline at Furman. But he talked about the importance of winning the state championship. You beat Charleston Southern two weeks ago. Now, obviously, the two rival games with the Citadel and Wofford, usually those two games play a huge part in who will win this conference in general. That was Devin Abrams on the carry as Furman is showing off their stable of backs. Abrams had a touchdown early. Roberto has two. We've seen the speed of Kendall Thomas. This running back committee, Roberto and Abrams, just veteran guys, both good receivers. They don't lose anything with either of them. They're both good blockers. Both can play fullback. And Thomas, we talked about, had a great August, more of a speed guy. But it's a, I'm going to say dependable <laughs> duo. Really, it's a dependable trio. Look how happy he is. We're going to talk about the running back by committee, but Citadel Faithful showing a little bit of love. But, ooh, a nice play there on a third and short. It's going to leave Coach Hendricks up with a huge question mark, but there he is. There's that Mike linebacker, Kyler Essies, with a huge tackle to stop Abrams and hold it to a fourth and one. A hatchet on the wrap-up as well. It looks like we have a flag on the field. <laughs> so unsportsmanlike conduct but the penalties are going to offset here I was going to say you're starting to see the rivalry relationship start to take part but Coach Hendricks is going to punt kind of in this gray area in the field this is kind of one of those situations where he has loved what his defense has given him here in the second half and he's going to trust them makes it it'll go 90 yards Levy, SoCon Special Teams Player of the Week. And the catch is made by Pools. So we're going to take a break with Furman leading 21-3, 553, excuse me, 543 remaining in the third. the great outdoors or the great indoors the new 2023 gmc sierra at4x welcome to the peak the premium off-roading gmc we are professional grade back at johnson haygood stadium the bulldogs number one goal on offense today was to score points possess the football hold the football be more physical than they were last week. Here's a pitch to Wallace. Breaks one tackle, trying to get back to the line of scrimmage. They didn't want this to carry over, so hoping to pick up the pace a bit today. They're not being shut out. They do have the three points on the board from the first half, but hoping to get a touchdown drive here in the second half with 525 remaining in the third quarter. But again, not to sound like a broken record, but the difference so far in the second half is the Citadel's inability to get out to that perimeter, pick up yards on that outside of the tackle boxes because a really nice play by Cam Brinson to slide by Christian Hilton, the blocking receiver on the outside. He makes a really nice play to kind of blow it up. Obviously, he doesn't make the tackle, but Wallace isn't able to extend the play, and Citadel is not able to stay on time with the yardage. Njoku in motion, he's yet to touch the football today. Green back to pass, looking for Njoku, and on cue, they connect. The catch from Nakem Njoku, a grad student out of Hampton, Georgia. Another look, Jack. Njoku, the last guy to have a touchdown for the Citadel team. We've seen a lot of success out of this Citadel passing game today. Njoku kind of just... Fakes, he's almost a decoy, right? He goes to block on the outside for Green, who looks like he's going to extend it to the outside. And at the last second, just splits right up the middle of that seam, completely untouched. I'm going to be interested to see, as they've struggled to run the football on the outside, if maybe Citadel continues to try to pass it, as you've seen Furman continue to stack the box. Green, again, back to pass, steps up, and he'll take off. 
Green, plenty of daylight. Finally, he's tracked down at about the 26 yard line. Oh, what a run from Ahmad Green, the redshirt freshman from Baltimore, Maryland. There you go, and as you can see, they go to that odd formation. He backs up into that process, and look, Furman blitzes heavy on that left side. When he sees the gap and hole open up, he takes off, and there's no catching him with the way he's been able to run. He puts a nasty little move on that outside cornerback, Michael Robson, puts the foot in the ground, and takes off. That's a huge play, and again, we mentioned it coming into this ballgame, only five plays over 20 yards from the line of scrimmage. That's already the their third today, looking to equal that moment. First and 10 for the Bulldogs. Green again back to pass. Lost it to the right side, and the pass is incomplete, looking for Hilton. And another helmet came off a of Bulldog. This time, I believe it was off of Llewellyn. But getting back to Green Jack, you know, Jalen Adams, I think I mentioned it in the first half briefly, ran for 144 yards on 35 carries, a couple of touchdowns against Furman last year, was 9 for 17 passing. And Green, looking at him today, has a bit of a similar skill set to Adams. Absolutely. And obviously, you talk about the intangibles, you can see it out of the redshirt freshman. But his ability to create when the play breaks down is what has been, it's been the most efficient part out of this Citadel offense today. Second and 10. Green will pitch to Grace Billups on the option. They'll pick up two. Third and eight situation upcoming from the 25 yard line, maybe the 26. Again, it looks like they're really trying to hone in on trying to beat these guys to the outside. Berman has been there ready for the call at almost every turn. I would have liked to see Ahmad Green take off and really follow his lead blocker up the middle of the field. It looked like early on, especially with Logan Billings, who we haven't seen a lot of late in this game, up the middle of the field because obviously they've struggled getting out to the perimeter. In motion, that's Wallace. Green in trouble, under pressure. He escapes it. Will fire for the end zone, and the pass is caught by Conway. Touchdown, Bulldogs. Again, it's his ability to create when the play breaks down. That's the play of the year right now for the Citadel Bulldogs. And Amad Green shows off that athleticism. Maybe that persona Jalen Adams-esque. But watch, complete miscommunication as we go to this replay. A little glitchy for you guys at home. But that's a huge play to get this Citadel Bulldog offense a little life. And also... A first touchdown in three weeks. That offense and sideline looks rejuvenated after that huge play from Ahmad Green. Conway gets behind the secondary, and it's been the, the passing Bulldogs today as the Citadel strikes their first touchdown in several weeks since ETSU. And Furman now leads 21 to 10. And we're going to stay right here, Jack. But it's great to see the Bulldogs put seven on the board and they're right back in this game. Absolutely. You can see these fans have needed something to cheer about for really the last two weeks. This is the first home game that the Bulldogs have played in close to almost a month. But what this team has got to be excited about, even in the future, is Ahmad Green's ability to create outside the pocket after the play's broken down. And it's given them a little life, cutting the score to just two possessions with just under three minutes left in the third quarter. Been impressed with what we've seen today from rookie Conway. He has several catchers, the grad trans catches, excuse me, the grad transfer from LIU, the Long Islander, out of Lindenhurst. It's out in Suffolk County. There you go. Up near your neck of the woods, right? Been a great addition for the Citadel this season. One of those 11 grad transfers. Changing landscape of college football. More transfers than ever before for the Bulldogs. And the kickoff from Kintner is into the end zone. To your point about how difficult sometimes it is, obviously the NBA program here at the Citadel speaks for itself. The University, Charleston, all speaks for itself. That part of it, of the recruiting process, should be easy. But they do talk about how difficult it is to get ingrained in this culture. 11 grad transfers, nine of them are starters and are really huge you know, members of this team. So. The, not only the importance of finding and going and getting those guys out of the transfer portal, but really executing to make sure that those are you know, pivotal pieces for your team as well. Well, Coach Thompson told us offensively they've been seeing signs, even though they were shut out the last couple of weeks, turned the ball over inside in the five twice the last couple of games, missed field goal against Mercer. Here's Roberto, who gets around the edge. It's a solid pickup on first down. They just needed to execute better 
Because he told us bigger plays are tougher now with the cut blocking rules, so the big plays have to be in the play action game. It's still bust one, hopefully, in the inside running game, like in the ETSU game. Um, but it's been tougher on the perimeter. But the big plays in the passing game, we're seeing it today, and we're seeing it from Ahmad Green. Absolutely. We talked about it in our spotlight. We thought that Logan Billings would be the guy that to kind of help out in busting a big play and allowing this offense to kind of spark a little life into it. But, you know, obviously injuries happen. And Ahmad Green has been ready, and he's been his best when his best has been needed today. Roberto again. And he's going to be about a yard short of the first. Obviously, Roberto with a huge game against the Citadel last year. We talked about that huge 90-yard touchdown run last year in this matchup. But tonight, it's been a guy, again, that's been really effective on the ground, close to 90 yards on the ground. But on third and short here, a name we haven't said since really the second quarter, look for maybe an RPO play action and Ryan Miller in the flats. It's a play that Furman loves to run. Miller, a guy that obviously the speed speaks for itself. Look for them to go here on third and short. Instead, the shovel pass to Roberto, a well-designed play and a first down for Furman. I think that's why Coach Hendricks is the offensive guru that he is and that I'm upstairs. Obviously, they use Miller the decoy. It's a play that they love to run in the flats. Obviously, the entire defense is following the two-time All-American, and they just keep going to the big fell, Dominic Roberto, and again, just keeps falling forward for another first down. It's been a big game for Dominic Roberto. Couple of touchdowns, picks up the first. First and 10 for the Paladins at the 41. Roberto behind Huff, who's in the gun. And again, the give to Roberto. Dances forward and has a three yard pickup. You know, we've given credit to where credit's due today. Roberto's been great. We also wanted to show love to the all SoCon preseason first teamers, those right and left tackles. We talked about how athletic they are at the guard position as well, but a guy that we haven't given enough credit to. He's made two mistakes on the interception, but just the grit of Tyler Huff out of the quarterback position today. Jace Wilson, the backup, with a big outing last week, but Tyler Huff is a guy that's dealt with injury, and this is his last year of football. Coach Hendricks spoke so highly of how mature this young man is, and it shown today as he's almost served as more of a game manager, but he has led this team to a 21-10 lead so far. And Roberto barrels over a Bulldog. Another first down for the Paladins as they're featuring Dominic Roberto on this drive, and he's delivering. You're going to watch this free safety, Chris Beverly, step up and make a nice play, but Roberto is the one that lays the lick on him in the secondary. I mean, seriously. He looks like he can play on both sides of the football. And as we head to the fourth quarter, expect to see that name, Dominic Roberto, quite a bit more. Fifteen minutes left for the Bulldogs who trail by 11. Furman driving behind the power running of Dominic Roberto. First and 10 for the Paladins. And the give, once again, is to Roberto. Makes a few cuts. And another first down run from the big fella, 231 pound running back, Dominic Roberto. And if we go to replay here, you're gonna see the hole that was opened up on the left side by the old SoCon selection, Anderson Tomlin. But how athletic this left guard, Jacob Johanning is, because Roberto is seeing the hole and he's hitting it. He's not dancing around, he's finding it and he's hitting it. Because if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And that's what this Paladin offense has done really this entire second half. Well, Coach Thompson told us on defense, has to do two things today. Have to stop the running back, hurt them twice last year on long runs, and have to stop the tight end, who's an All-American. Held the tight end in check. They have not stopped this running back in Roberto. Better there. Picks up a couple. Absolutely. And I usually... You know, what we saw on that first drive, right, where Furman had a lot of success running the football, but they'd also beat you on the play action after two, three runs. They beat you up, beat you up, take a shot. At this point in the game, Coach Hendricks respects what they've done on this other sideline to get back into the ball game. As you see here, Coach Hendricks, what they've been able to do offensively, the offensive guru mind that he is, he's just trying to kill this clock at this point. This is where that time of possession becomes 
really hurtful for that Citadel defense. They've been on the field for quite a while. And at this point, if they can get six, it really puts Citadel in a tough spot here in the fourth. And they've held on to the ball here in the second half. A couple of interceptions thrown in the first half. This is Abrams who breaks loose for another Paladin first down. And Coach Hendricks told us, you know, we've been leaving too many points on the field. We've moved the ball on everyone, but have to address the recent turnovers. Saw them in the first half, but no turnovers in the second half. Absolutely. And I think in that Sanford loss, Jace Wilson, who had face value, had a really incredible ball game. Two touchdowns, two for over 330. But it was their inefficiencies in the red zone where they were able to kind of lose that game, not limiting the big play on the run defensively. Obviously, you've seen them play great defense on the ground so far in the second half, but offensively, they're just going to try to wear you out in the running game, it appears today. Miller in motion. The give is to Abrams. He's wrapped up. That's Carson Hatchett. Hatchett, a preseason second-team all-SOCON selection. Was second-team all-SOCON all-freshman team as well back in 2021. He's a strong kid from Florida. A couple of sacks last fall. Had one sack in the spring COVID season. Won this season against Campbell. Absolutely. We talked about the big plays that this defense has been able to convert. We've seen a couple sacks from Hassan Black, Dominic Poole, and Destin back in the backfield. We talked about bending and not breaking. If this defense can hold the three, it allows their offense to keep them in the game. And then you're still within the two scores. This is Abrams. Plunges forward. And forward progress will leave him about four yards short. So it'll be third and four for the Paladins. It's a really nice play by that Sam linebacker, Brian Horry. Kind of meets Adams right there in the gap. Makes a really nice play to wrap him up. But you can tell these guys really don't like each other. It makes it just that much more fun to, you know, kind of call and watch as a viewer. So a big third and four. As the crowd gets loud here in Johnson Haygood Stadium. There you are. Bulldogs Kinesco, need a stop. The, game. the give to Abrams. Fighting, still fighting. And he's going to be short. He took a hell of a shot. It almost looked like his mouth guard shot out of his helmet. It didn't look like they picked up the first bound. You saw the cadets. They knew how big of a third down that was in order to get off the field. Coach Hendricks with a huge decision to make. A field goal makes it a two-score game, keeps it at a two-score game. He knows that six could put this thing on ice, though. Whew. Hey, he was stuffed by Marquise Blunt. I haven't said his name yet today. Been banged up this season, didn't play at App State, a preseason second team, all SOCON selection, led the team in sacks last year. And now we're going to have a time out on the field, so that'll take us to a break as well. 10.42 left to go. The Paladins lead 21-10. The 102nd meeting between the Citadel and Furman, we mentioned earlier that the first meeting was in 1913. They have played every year since 1919, with the exception of a three-year hiatus during World War II. Of course, you see there, Furman leads the all-time series. Last season, Furman got the win in Greenville, avenging a 27-6 loss to the Bulldogs in Charleston back in the spring of 2021. Furman's last win here was in 2018, a 28-17 victory. They're going to go for three. Alex LaPro, who's six for six on field goals this season. The kick is up. And no good. LaPro hooks it. And so the Bulldogs will remain down 11. Would have been a two score game regardless, Jack, but 11, much different than 14. You're going to see the angle here. It just looks like he yanks it just a little bit, but I understand where Coach Hendricks is. Citadel with obviously a lot of momentum after that last time. Odd green touchdown, wanting to make sure that if they do go down and score, that they still have a seven-point advantage. But, boy, 
bend and don't break. That third down stop with Devin Abrams in the hole, just that much bigger as Citadel's able to keep this lead just at 11. But, wow, that's a huge miss. And here's a, a note that we like to talk about. On, I asked Coach Hendricks. It was like almost talking about a no-hitter in baseball, right? Ryan Miller, eight consecutive games in a row with a touchdown. A fourth and short play, that would have been his type of, you know, red zone delivery, and they didn't weren't able to go to him there. Green drops back to pass. He's chased from behind. Got it away just in time. Incomplete over the head of Cooper Wallace. And with two Paladins chasing down Green. Did you see the hands on the sidelines for sidelines from number 97 tight end Ben Brockington? Maybe something to keep note, Coach Thompson. Brockington, a target in the end zone already today. Nice little play there. <laughs> He's a large man, 6'1", 278, a converted tackle. If we take another look, the pressure applied by Bryce McCormick. He does. He goes up and pinpoints that thing, but they stunt the blitz there really nice. McCormick, number 31, you see coming right through the middle of that offensive line and really disrupts that first and 10 play. Hilton to the bottom of your screen. He's covered by Yates, so Green looks the other way, and he connects with the receiver. That's Ricky Conway once again. Conway has the touchdown for the Bulldogs. I think that when they Citadel goes back and does film, opposing teams go to do film on the Citadel moving forward about the SoCon schedule. They're going to have to really change what they do defensively based on what Ahmad Green has been able to show with the pass. If they're able to pick up five or six just quick slant plays like that, it completely changes and diversifies this offense. Under 10 remaining, trailing by 11. Green under pressure. And he will go down. Finally, they take down Green. Ooh, he takes a big shot there. And we talked about that Paladin Swarm. That's a third down that they really needed to pick up. But you saw number 43, Braden Gilby, the first on attack. And he's able to finish the play there. You could see Ahmad Green coming off the sideline, limping a bit. That's a third down play they wish they could have had back in that offensive line. Give him a little bit more time to try to pick it up. He'll be coming into today second on the team in tackles. His dad played at Texas A&M, was a member of the famed 12th man kickoff squad at A&M, established in the early 1980s under then head coach Jackie Sherrill, comprised solely of volunteer, non-scholarship, former high school athletes from the Aggie student body, made up completely of walk-ons. Jack, it was one of the best traditions in college football, really sought to light a fire under the team, connect to the passion of the student body. It was effective and, of course, with changes in the game, it eventually morphed into a, just a 12-man walk-on player each season. Absolutely. And it's such a cool history. I mean, it's why we love college football, right? It's romantic. It's intimate. Stories like that, giving the guy the opportunity, almost like a Rudy at Notre Dame. But you can see why Braden Gilby plays the way he does, taking almost on the persona of what his dad probably, the work he had to put in to put himself in a position like that at Texas A&M. And uh, obviously, Gilby's been able to translate that in the way he plays in this defensive uh, linebacking core for the Paladins because he plays downhill and downhill hard. Nine minutes remaining. How much time can Furman milk on this drive? Abrams is met. That's Hassan Black on the stop for the Citadel. He has been a terror in that Paladin backfield. You see, he slips the right guard, and he absolutely lays the boom. Does a good job protecting the football there, but... It's going to be plays like that that are going to need to get Citadel back in this ballgame with just under nine to play. How about his family? His brother Larry played at Indiana and then for the Bengals. Jabril played at Michigan and then for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Talented family. Here's Miller. Nothing doing. There's Black once again. 6'3", 235, and he runs that well. Seems a little unfair. As Miller's going to come up hobbling. You hate to see that from the Paladin offense, but can't say enough about what Hassan Black has done in the backfield today for that Citadel defense. Team leader in tackles at eight of them against Campbell, eight more against Mercer. Coming off six tackles and a pass broken up at App State. Big third down for the Bulldogs, who absolutely have to get off the field here. Third and 12. Obviously, you've seen what they've tried to do the entire second half. They've run the ball to kill this clock. It'll be interesting to see if they allow Tyler Huff to take a shot here. 
they're going to want another chance to look at it because a first down here might ice the game. So timeout called by Furman. They're going to talk it over. 7.34 remaining. Furman leads 21-10. Third and 12 for Furman from their own 40. Jack, do you take the conservative approach here and milk some clock, or do you try to pick up this first down? Coach Hendricks trusts his defense, but look to see maybe Huff take a shot. Well, Huff completes it inside of Kendall Dean, who slips through and will be just shy of the first down marker. Maybe a half yard shy. Now to your point, if he's a yard short, do you now take a chance or do you make Citadel go the full 90 yards or 80 yards, whatever that might be after the punt, but a really awesome play call. We talked about it. Do so with a guy that we haven't said a lot today. The grad transfer from James Madison, Kendall Dean slips through. It's a huge play, but you can see the Citadel defense revved up. It'll be interesting to see a similar position early in the first half. Will they opt out and Punt the ball away. So less than seven minutes remaining as the clock continues to tick. A huge fourth and one upcoming. And now a timeout is going to be called. So I'll check that. It's a penalty. Yeah. So they'll take the delay a game. And we'll stay right here. Very similar to that play early that they trust their punters so much they want to give them the extra five yards to allow them to really try to boot it and you know, coffin corner, make Citadel go the ride, but it's a testament to how much he trusts this defense, Coach Hendricks, and this firm and coaching staff. Yeah, you wondered how difficult this matchup would be, Jack, because, you know, playing the Citadel after Samford, two completely different styles of offense. This one will roll into the end zone for a touchback. But playing those two different teams, you know, Coach Hendricks told us if we waited till this week to get ready, it would be hard. But we play them every year. We have a history against them. Most of the defense back this season. And, of course, Coach, Hen Coach Hendricks spent 10 years at Air Force, so he knows the nature of this offense, which really helps. He said it's always a challenge, but something that we know is coming. So even though they play the Citadel right after Samford, it's more of a spread air attack. Uh, they're up for the task. Absolutely. And he mentioned that in our interview with early this week. He's like, yeah, it'd be difficult if we started prepping for it this week. But this is a guy that spent half his life at Furman. It means he sees Citadel once a year, 10 years at the Air Force Academy. And I don't know if anybody knows that offense better than the service schools. So the Bulldogs trail by 11. They take over from the 20. Give up the middle is to Llewellyn. He's got about six. And again, we talked about it in the second half. Furman's made the adjustment to really close everything else off on the outside. They've, you know, prohibited them to getting to the perimeter well and taking advantage of the through the guards there and a really nice play. But they're going to have to start taking some big shots down two scores with just under six to go. Green back to pass. He'll fire deep. And the connection not there with Hilton. That's one he'd like to have back. And you, you hate to rag on the kid because Christian Hilton has been really good today. He sits down in the soft part of the coverage, and it, Green, again, puts a really nice throw on it. It's going to be one that Hilton wants back, but this is an opportunity now for Siddle, clearly in four-down territory with just under six to go for them to pick it up. Maybe, you know, second and short, take the shot there. But on third and four here, you'll look to see Green throw again. A trailing by two scores with six minutes left. Not a great recipe traditionally for the Citadel offense, but they've been able to air it out a bit with Green. Third down, and Llewellyn is stuffed. It's a really nice play by the outside linebacker, Luke Clark. Haven't said his name today, but a guy that's already got a couple sacks on the year. This is his first season as a starter on a very veteran group, but... Clearly, like we said, this is four down territory for the dogs. Fourth and two. Game on the line here. Green, back to pass. What a grab oh. made by Conway. He's been the star for the Citadel today. Oh, he saves the day for the Citadel. Their drive continues. Are you kidding me with this catch? Dun -dun 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 -dun. That's a game-saving catch from Conway. Are you kidding me? It's the best fourth and two, three-yard game you're going to see all season in college football. The A-back showing off his receiving skills. One-handed grab. Green 
down the middle of the field over the head of Wallace. Nobody home for the Bulldogs. But you the know, clock stops with 5-12 remaining. Going back to that third and four play, they pick up the two yards. I was surprised they didn't throw the ball there, knowing that on a fourth and two spot, you realistically got a better opportunity to pick it up in the air. But Conway with a game-saving catch, I don't know if you're going to see a more exciting three-yard game in maybe college football the rest of the season. <laughs> Conway's been tremendous today for the Bulldogs. A grad transfer from LIU. Long Islander with great hands. Adams back to pass once again to the right sideline. And this time he completes to Hilton. You love the confidence of a guy like Ahmad Green to go back to Hilton. He's been your guy all day long. No fear you dropped the last one. We're going to come right back to you. But Green's got a little bit of zip on that fastball there. He's really delivering the ball, putting it right on the numbers. Again, I sound like a broken record, but if I'm a Citadel fan, i got to be excited about the future with this young freshman commanding the ship today. And the freshman receiver, Hilton, out of Granville, Ohio. Young Bulldogs, big part of this drive. Again, Green connects this time. It's with Jay Graves Billups. And this it, passing offense clicking for the Citadel. I tell coming in today, we do all our prep. We do all our homework. This is a triple option offense. We're going to run the ball down your throats. Well, it's been Green in the air today that's really given the Paladins problems. Green back to pass once again. Steps up, fires towards the sideline, and out of the reach of Hilton. You kind of saw in the last throw, too, almost that baseball-style middle infield to second base double play throw. You see a lot of it on Sundays these days between these dual-threat guys, whether it's Allen or Mahomes, kind of throwing from a lot of different arm slots, and Green showing he's got that skill set as well. Uh, we have a bulldog down. That's Bryson Jones, the sophomore from Greenwood, South Carolina, the left guard. So we're going to go to break. Furman holding on to a lead, 21-10. Bulldogs have the ball at the 44, trailing by 11, 420 remaining. And the aerial assault from Ahmad Green will continue. Green been a guy that we raved about, the four-sport athlete in high school. He showed off that skill set all day today. Green again back to pass. Pressure, and he's taken down. That's Braden Gilby on the sack. He gets through for the Paladins. That's a big sack as time continues to tick down on the Citadel. I know, and it looked like first on attack for the Paladins was number 76, Trey Rogers. Again, a plethora of names on this pl uh, Paladin defense that have really made their presence felt. Third and 19. Trying to pick up some of it on third down. That's Conway once again. If you're a Bulldog fan, I told you coming today, it would be the Ahmad Green to Rookie Conway show. What would you say? I don't know. I would say that I was the guy that thought Logan Billings was going to be the impact game in our Open today, but boy, was I wrong. <laughs> so fourth and 13. Bulldogs have no choice but to go for this. Trailing by 11, three and a half remaining. Green under center will drop back. He'll throw incomplete, looking for Conway once again. Would have been short of the sticks anyway. You're going to see he's going to go back to Conway on the far side of the field. It's a throw that he wishes he could have back. But Conway has become slowly Green's favorite target today, a piece that could be integral moving forward in the SoCon season. The Bulldogs turn the ball over on downs, trailing by 11 with 316 remaining here in the fourth quarter. Expect a heavy dose of Abrams and Roberto. It's Abrams in the backfield now behind Huff. And he'll get the carry. Not much, but that's okay as the clock will continue to run and the Citadel will be forced to start using some timeouts. 
you know, what we've seen out of Coach Hendricks' dual threat quarterbacks so far up to this point in the year is a lot of them getting out of the pocket, taking off to run. That is where Huff dislocated the elbow in that game against Charleston Southern. So we've seen a lot more ground attack from the running back committee today, and it's been wildly effective for the Paladins. Second and 10 for the Paladins. Again, the give is to Abrams. He'll slice left, and he'll set up a third and long situation. Absolutely, we noted it after that first down play. It looks like the Citadel will use a timeout here to stop that clock. It, it looks like they will come to the sideline, use that timeout here. We're still three timeouts to go, down just 11 in a rivalry game. It's a pride deal. Was well, surprised Coach Thompson didn't use one after that first play, but. You know, like we talked about, you see Jace Wilson meeting uh, Devin Abrams there. We've seen Coach Hendricks' quarterbacks get outside of the pocket, use their legs to affect the team, but they seem to have found a, you know, a strategy that has worked for them today, and that's been, you know, death by that running back committee. He talked about how good, obviously, his backs are in Dominic Roberto and Devin Abrams. We've seen flashes of the speed of Kendall Thomas, but what Coach Hendricks and this Furman team have to be really excited about as they move forward into this Southern Conference rest of their schedule, they've got to be excited about their ability to score in the red zone, take advantage of the miscues that the Citadel was able to cough up on that other side of the field. And uh, not the best game that a Coach Hendricks team has played, but a win, as it seems, indeed. We well, took advantage of the turnovers in the second half. They have an 11-point lead, third and eight. 224 remaining. Expect them to keep it on the ground here. Huff out of the gun. Ooh. And a flag flies. We're going to have a false start on Furman. I think it's going to be number 81, Parks Gissinger. You know, we took note after that last possession. The two-time All-American Ryan Miller did limp off the field, so we're going to see a lot of Gissinger here. Obviously, this is a running down, but this would be a situation that they'd feel really comfortable with a dump-off pass to Miller and let him do the thing with the ball in his hands. But as we see the cadets here looking for a big third-town stop, this would be that time of the day. Time of the afternoon where maybe one of those superstar corners make a play to swift the tides. Abrams to the right of Huff. Kendall Thomas is behind. It will be Thomas. And the Bulldogs will have the stop. So fourth down coming. Citadel will get possession after the punt. They trail by 11, 219 remaining. Absolutely. And you love to see the defense with a big stand. Furman's offensive line really has had its way where Citadel has been really effective is that linebacking core, which I'm sure Coach Thomason and his defensive staff are going to be really excited about moving forward. But, you know, we talked about the Southern Conference in general. You know, obviously both of these teams entering this matchup, both one and one, understanding that these teams are going to have to beat each other up the rest of the season, right? What are two losses in this conference? You could still win a conference championship. You could see a winner with three this season the way – the SoCon's going to beat each other up. I know the Citadel is happy to be back home today, playing in front of their home fans. Their first home game in 28 days. Last time they were here in Johnson Haygood was September 10th against ETSU. And we do have to show a little love. Johnson Haygood showed out. It's obviously Parents Weekend. Saw a lot of baby blue and two-tone blue out here today. It's a great showing. Pool. Allows it to go over his head, and it's going to be downed inside the five at the three-yard line, so the Bulldogs will have their work cut out. 2.09 remaining. You know, we talked about how important time of possession was to both of these ball clubs entering the contest, but today it's been the battle of field position, and Furman clearly has taken advantage of that today so far. Well, this passing attack for the Citadel should continue <laughs> now. 209 remaining, trailing by 11. It's been fun to watch Ahmad Green drop back and sling the ball over the field. I've been quite surprising. I mean, what's next? Are they going to go out of shotgun? I mean, nothing surprises at this point. The running Bulldogs have been an air raid offense today. Well, they're backed up. They'll have to go 97 yards. 
just to get their first score, if it's a touchdown. Of course, you can always go to the field goal distance, take the three, and then try an onside kick. Scrambling. And the pass is complete yep. to Graves Billups at the nine. He did, and again, I think moving forward, you almost, if, if Ahmad Green is the guy moving forward in the rest of this schedule, they have to be able to play call maybe some drawn quarterback draws, but allow him to back up into passing downs. Oh, oh. Almost a pick six from Cam Brinson, who dropped the interception as he cut in front of Ricky Conway. Well, he was walking in for six as we were congratulating Green on an incredible day so far. That's a throw maybe he's trying to force it into a spot and maybe trust the arm strength just a little bit too much there. But moving forward for this offense, they were at their best today when he was creative out of the pocket after the playbook down. Obviously, you can't draw that up as a coordinator, but putting this team in passing downs, allowing him to get creative, I'm sure is a, a fresh breath of air for a lot of the people that come to these ball games. Green has some time. He'll try the right side looking for Conway. And the pass is incomplete. So that'll bring up a fourth down situation for the Bulldogs. Game we on the line it. here. We missed it there, but Michael Robinson was in really great coverage against Conway there. Robinson, a redshirt sophomore out of Atlanta, Georgia. This is his first year in the starting role. Again, we talked about how deep personnel-wise this defense is. He's been a guy that's learned a lot under the senior Travis Blackshear. Obviously, Blackshear's got his name imprinted all over this contest, but you know, in this passing game, Michael Robinson is going to be huge for Furman going down the road. Had the interception at CSU. Couple tackles for a loss last week against Samford. And here we go, fourth and three. Green. And that pass is Ooh. incomplete, almost intercepted. Furman's better off that it was dropped. And they'll take over. Absolutely, and we just talked about him. Blackshear, again, with an incredibly athletic play. Full extension, like a center fielder in the outfield. A little playoff baseball action, but almost a really nice play. Fourth and three, there's the maturity that Green will acquire over time. Just need three or five. Obviously, you're trying to get back in the game and make some plays downfield, but just to pick up the first down, extend the drive, it did feel like at this point in the game with what offense they run in general, this lead may have been a little bit too much, but a morale drive to kind of build some momentum is stalled short after an incredible showing from this Furman defense all afternoon. Well, for what we've seen from Green today, with his arm and his running ability, even when Peyton Derrick is healthy, might be some decisions to make for Brent Thompson. We'll see what he decides to do in the future. Green has really flashed today for the Bulldogs. Absolutely, and as Furman lines up in victory formation, the Bulldogs hold some assessed, but you're right. I mean, what a Green has showed is a completely different skill set that I think Derek brings to the table. Obviously, Peyton Derek had a really established career up at Wofford, a great pocket passer, but Green, when I was... It's the intangibles, it's the arm strength, but also the ability to create outside of the pocket after plays break down as Furman's just two kneels away from ending this ball game. It'll be curious to see as they line up over the rock here how Citadel's able to kind of treat this situation. Furman will return home to Greenville to take on Western Carolina next weekend as Huff <laughs> yeah. takes a knee. And again, some words, some pushing and shoving. Well, K.J. Pierce not happy for the Bulldogs. See the big fella in the back there barking. He didn't appreciate maybe the late shot on first down, but again, if you don't think this ball game means something to these kids, we talk about the 103-year-long rivalry. They, to be playing a game since 1913 is truly remarkable. Well, 103 years later, it still means a lot to these fellas out here playing today. Now the Paladins won't have to snap it as the clock will run down on the Citadel. Furman defeats the Citadel 21 to 10. Take advantage of a couple of turnovers from the Bulldogs in the third quarter. Two touchdowns from Dominic Roberto, one from Devin Ab Abrams in the first half and the 11 point win, Jack. What'd you see today from Furman that you really liked? Well, I think it was the ability to establish on the run as we're going to see here. First, the touchdown from Devin Abrams, but all three rushing touchdowns. Obviously, Dominic Roberto was the guy. 
but we can't give enough credit to the Citadel defense. Ben, don't break. You saw some ecstatic plays out of that secondary. Uh, obviously, we saw a lot of Dominic Poole, a lot of Destin Mack. But on that Furman side, they were able to execute when it mattered. Miscues from that Citadel team in their own end zone. And Furman was able to punch in through the big back, Dominic Roberto. The Bulldogs will go back on the road. They'll take on Wofford and Spartanburg on October 15th, and then a trip to Cullowhee to take on Western Carolina on October 22nd. They'll finish off with three of their last four games at home here in Johnson Haygood. Furman, as I mentioned, a home date with Western Carolina next weekend. The Paladins improved to four and two overall, two and one in the SOCON, the Citadel. Drops to one and four overall, one and two in the Southern Conference. Dominic Roberto, his two touchdowns help lead to the victory for Furman. Well, that'll do it for us here at Johnson Haygood Stadium for Jack DeLongshaw and the rest of our crew. I'm Dave Weinstein saying so long from Charleston. Furman a winner, 21 to 10.